So you're planning a visit to Rocky Mountain National Park in December. That's great news. You're going to have a wonderful time. But you can make it even better by coming prepared and knowing what to expect. So in this video, I'll tell you what you need to know to have the best experience possible. During the month of December, and usually right through January, you'll find the towns of Estes Park and Grand Lake dressed up in their Christmas finest, with wonderful lights throughout the downtown areas. This sets a magical mood for this wonderful time of year. Now, December can be pretty chilly, and it's usually one of the coldest months of the entire year. Temperatures can vary greatly. Some years it can dip down into the single digits. It's also a very windy time of year, though that can be said for most of the months between October and March. In the winter, the jet stream seems to settle right over Rocky Mountain National Park, and those high mountains pull the winds down into the east side of the park. This means that the lower elevations of the park will often have winds gusting above 30 miles an hour, while higher up, those winds can be extreme. In fact, in 1981, a wind speed indicator was installed on the top of Long's Peak to record the winter winds. It only lasted 75 days up there, and 13 of those days, the winds averaged above 100 miles an hour. Now, the final recording it made was 201 miles an hour. We don't know if the winds got any stronger because the anemometer they had up there was destroyed by those winds. So yeah, winds really are a serious factor in the winter, especially for the east side of Rocky Mountain National Park. The west side of Rocky, however, tends to be much less windy. Now in terms of snow, we usually do get some snow in December, but don't expect it to look like a winter wonderland, at least not all of the time. December and January are the driest months of the year as well, with most of the heavier snows falling between February and mid-May. Yes, mid-May. Generally, Estes Park and the lower areas of the National Park will be snow-free for the month of December and for much of the winter. However, most years you can usually find a fair amount of snow around the Bear Lake area. The strong winds blow the snow off of the high peaks and down into the trees in the subalpine zone, where the trees hold onto that snow. So, while the high mountains and the lower valleys may be snow-free. The area around Bear Lake and the whole subalpine zone may have a couple of feet of powdery snow in the forest. Now, the west side of Rocky Mountain National Park around Grand Lake tends to be very different than the east side. They usually get quite a bit more precipitation and have a lot less wind. So if you're looking for a winter wonderland in December, your best bet is the west side of Rocky Mountain National Park. However, you will need to drive around the mountains to get there, as the road through the park is closed at this time of year. Since the Bear Lake area usually has snow, you really should plan on renting snowshoes from one of the outdoor stores. It's not very expensive, it's usually only $10 to $15 a day. It's a great way to experience the winter, as snowshoes allow you to stay up on top of the snow. Consider a snowshoe hike from Bear Lake to Dream Lake, or up to Mills Lake, or up to Bierstadt Lake. On windy days, stick to the tree-sheltered hikes like Bierstadt and Mills Lake. The Dream Lake area tends to be one of the windiest areas in the park, so it is best left for calmer days. Now, when the winds are strong enough to start pushing you around, be wise and leave the hiking for another day. On those days, falling trees become a serious concern. Those days are great for sitting by the fire with a good book. Now, if we get a good amount of snow in December, then you may be able to do some sledding at Hidden Valley just off of Trail Ridge Road. Hidden Valley is the only place in the park where sledding is allowed. It is perfect for young kids. It's a very gentle slope and has a warming house with bathrooms right next to the slope. Just be aware that the sledding is very exposed, and so it's also best done on days when the wind isn't blowing too hard. 
Sleds can also be rented from the outdoor stores in Estes Park. Again, if it's a very snowy December, as occasionally happens, then backcountry skiing is also an option for those who are willing to put in the work. Since we don't have chairlifts in the National Park, you have to make your own way up the mountain before skiing down. When I'm backcountry skiing at Hidden Valley, it normally takes me about an hour and 15 minutes to get up to the top and then just 12 to 15 minutes to get back down. You need to be a very proficient skier and avalanche educated to do this sport. During the month of December, you can often find elk grazing in the large meadows. On windy days, you may see them in the trees at the edge of those meadows. Mule deer can usually be found on the sides of the road on Deer Mountain. You can usually find them by taking just a short drive up the road from the Beaver Meadows entrance station. Occasionally, you'll find bighorn sheep just outside of the park along Fall River Road or down Highway 34 near the town of Drake. Now, in terms of visitation, the first half of December is fairly quiet, but visitation increases quite a bit as we get close to Christmas and New Year. Weekdays are generally pretty quiet during most of December, but weekends can be pretty busy, especially up at Bear Lake and Glacier Gorge. Now, once we hit the holidays, then it's pretty busy on most days, but still nothing like the summer crowds. Now, there are a few things you should be aware of when visiting Rocky Mountain National Park in December. Firstly, Trail Ridge Road and Old Fall River Road are both closed for the winter. If you want to travel between the east and west sides of Rocky Mountain National Park, then you'll have to take a three-hour detour around the mountains to get there. You also want to be sure that you drive or that you rent a vehicle with proper snow tires and, if possible, with all-wheel drive. Despite what you might think, all-wheel drive vehicles will give you a much better traction in the snow than four-wheel drive vehicles. Also, be aware that the park often implements a traction law when the roads are snowy or icy and will only allow vehicles into the park that have proper tires for snow and ice or alternatively snow chains. So come prepared. Well, those are the basics of what you need to know when visiting Rocky Mountain National Park in December. If you come prepared, you'll have a fantastic time. While you're here, stop by my gallery in Estes Park to warm up and say hello. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again soon. If you would like to learn more about Rocky Mountain National Park, visit my website, RockyMountainNationalPark.com. For my books and calendar, visit RockyTrailPress.com. And if you're visiting Estes Park, Colorado, be sure and stop in my gallery, Images of RMNP.